Hello dear crypto friends, so today it's time to talk again about XRP. We haven't talked about this coin for quite a while now, so let's take a look what XRP is doing and what we can expect from XRP in the next months and one to two years. How high will it go? What is the top for XRP? Why is it taking so long? What, where, I'm, where is my promised Lambo? I cannot buy a Lambo yet from XRP. What is going on? So let's dive right into the XRP chart. Now, XRP is doing a very interesting formation. It is doing a long term bullish wedge, like super long term. Look at this. It's been in the wedge since March 2020 and it's just slowly pushing upwards and the resistance line is slowly coming down. And this is a super insane long term wedge where it ends in July 2022. OK, and now, of course, the question is, what will happen? Will it go upwards or will it break down? Will the structure break down? That is, of course, something we would like to find out. Now, looking from a purely technical perspective, what can we see? We can see that here we had a low at 50 cents in June 2021 and then we had a second low at 54 cents in January this year. However, if we look at the RSI, the relative strength index, what can we see? We can see that it has a lower low. So while the price has done a higher low, 54 cents being higher than um, 51 cents, the RSI is making a lower low. This is again our good old hidden bullish divergence. So XRP USD is having a bullish hidden divergence. The weekly chart confirms this because the weekly chart has an even stronger hidden bullish divergence. The RSI is making lower lows while um, the price is making higher lows. So this increases the probability quite a lot that this structure will break to the upside. OK, so just from a purely technical perspective, this increases the chance a lot that this structure will break out sometime before August, July 2022 to the upside. Now, on now let's go to XRP BTC. Now, the XRP BTC was doing a falling wedge. If we look at the weekly chart, this is the XRP BTC chart. It's been in a long term ascending trend channel. If we look at this, this is like a super long term ascending trend channel. Basically, XRP has been since it has been created inside this trend channel and has been making higher lows, consistently higher lows. That's why personally, I think that long term this is looking good as compared, for example, to a coin like LTC. For example, let's compare this to LTC, right? Uh, Litecoin. If we compare it to LTC, we can see that LTC is making, yeah, here it was making lower lows, which uh, doesn't look so nice. And it's also making lower highs, right? So this is for me on first sight, a brutally descending trend channel. So in my opinion, long term, this looks like an asset that loses value as compared to BTC. Whereas XRP, you can say what you will about XRP, um, that it's a bank coin, I don't know, that it's a, an S coin, whatever. But just looking at it from a, from a technical perspective, from a charting perspective, it looks long term super bullish. It's been in an ascending trend channel since 2013. And what more can you ask of a coin? Of course, we would have liked it to pump here, right? We would have liked it to go already here to the upper trend channel. It didn't happen. We all know why it didn't happen because of the corrupt SEC that has decided to sue Ripple. We all know the story. So let's look again at the XRP BTC chart and what we can deduce from this chart. So it has been in some kind of falling wedge formation um, and it has broken to the outside. Let's go to the three day chart. So it has been doing this one, two, three, four, five wave structure. Then it breaks out, but it doesn't immediately pump like crazy. But what does it do? Exactly. It backtests the uh, previous resistance, which has now become support and then goes on to higher prices. So this falling wedge here is like a quite bullish looking structure. 
But of course, in order for XRP to really pump and reach high prices, two things must happen. Ideally, it should win the SEC case or that should, there should be some kind of settlement. And I followed uh, the case, so it looks like 99% probability that uh, Ripple will win. The SEC is just uh, completely embarrassing itself. They are doing only like weird stuff. And the probability is insanely high that Ripple will win, insanely high. So this is one part of the whole equation, like what is happening with the SEC lawsuit. But the other thing is, of course, what is Bitcoin doing? Because it doesn't make sense to make a pure altcoin analysis without looking at the Bitcoin chart, because in the end, it's all given by what Bitcoin is doing, right? And we said that Bitcoin is doing this kind of flat correction structure, right? It's, it's doing like this kind of like running flat correction. And it's looking as if we will go upwards with a higher probability than that we go downwards. Why? Because here we also have established that we have um, higher lows, right? The price is making higher lows. And at the same time, the RSI here is making lower lows. So this is again a hidden bullish divergence. And such a long term hidden bullish divergence means that we have like a huge potential for a break to the upside. Now, I personally suspect, and this is always my conviction, and I will just keep repeating it, that uh, Bitcoin, we don't know what it will do in the short term. In the short term, Bitcoin is always crazy, random fluctuations. But I think that at some point in early 2023 or late 2022, Bitcoin will go to the upper resistance line of this long term trend channel. You know, the long term channel that Bitcoin has been following since it began trading on Mt. Gox in 2010. So if Bitcoin goes upwards and I strongly suspect that it will do some weird stuff in between and then it will start just going upwards at some point towards the end of the year. Let's change the color. So yeah, I strongly suspect that it will just wobble around and do some weird Bitcoin, weird random rage stuff, which we don't know what, you know, it could even go down and retest the weekly moving average 200 because the MA 200. So the weekly moving average 200 has always been the long term support and it's been tested once, twice, three times or actually four times because it has come down again here. It has tested the support, bounced back, tested it again and uh, five times again, it like five times in its history, this support has been tested. So it's not excluded that Bitcoin will bounce down to the MA200 panic, you know, like everyone is freaking out. It goes down to 20,000, then bounces back. And then afterwards we see a huge rally. Bitcoin loves to do that kind of stuff. We had this time and time again. We had this uh, in March 2020, insane drop to 4,000 afterwards rally to 64,000. How crazy is that? We had it um, here. Yes, right in August 2015, dropped 250, then afterwards rally to 500, and then afterwards the big rally to 20,000. And of course, also in 2013 with the Silk Road crash, I still remember it. That's uh, shortly before that I started uh, in the crypto market. So it crashed down to 110 or like 100, and then immediately afterwards rallied to 1,200. Bitcoin loves doing that stuff, so we should be prepared for anything. Short term, anything can happen, but I still remain very bullish long term for uh, Bitcoin that we will go back to the upper trend line of this long term trend channel here. So this would be around 200 something thousand late 2022, early 2023. So for our XRP chart in turn, this of course means that we can break this triangle to the downside. We can absolutely. There's nothing preventing us from doing some kind of like structure like this here. We go down, we break down, then it bounces back because it's following Bitcoin and then Bitcoin starts pumping and then XRP goes completely crazy. Something like this could happen. But if Bitcoin goes sideways and Ripple wins the SEC case, then of course this will break to the upside. And this um, divergence here, this hidden bullish divergence indicates that the XRP chart is primed for a pump. It wants to pump, right? It's in the technicals. It's in the charts that the chart says, I want to pump. Please give me one single reason why I need to pump. And since everyone 
has sold XRP already. There are only hardcore psychopaths like me in XRP. Uh, my, my largest holding is XRP. So there are only so hardcore psychopaths now in XRP who are absolutely determined and know that XRP will moon. They know that XRP will moon and all the other ones, all the get rich quick types are out. They are not in XRP anymore. So the chart is primed for a pump. It wants to pump and I still remain bullish for XRP, but only if Bitcoin also pumps. If now for some weird reason, Bitcoin enters a two year bear market, then XRP will also follow accordingly. I see no single scenario, even if the SEC loses the case, even if Ripple wins the lawsuit, I see no scenario where XRP goes to 30, 40, 50 dollars while Bitcoin is having a bear market. Forget it. If Bitcoin has a bear market, XRP will also have a bear market. It might pump a bit due to the SEC lawsuit. So, for example, now, if it wins the lawsuit, it might pump. But then it, if Bitcoin starts dumping insanely, it will also start dumping. Bitcoin needs to pump. Bitcoin needs to go to 150, 200, 250,000 by the end of the year or early next year for XRP to reach insane price targets. So how high will XRP go? Well, I think it will go pretty, pretty high. And you will think as always that I'm crazy. But in order to determine how high it might go, we just do the Fibonacci extensions, right? And in the first extension, it can go to 13 without problems. So if Bitcoin goes sideways now and doesn't do much and Ripple wins the SEC case, I suspect it will go to 13 very fast. Then it will correct for a while, you know, and then if Bitcoin goes to higher prices, if Bitcoin starts going to 200 or 250,000, then I suspect we'll get a second push to even higher prices. And how high this will go is then, of course, determined by the full Fibonacci extension. And the full Fibonacci extension gives us targets of 35, 49 and 57, 57 being the full 4.236 Fibonacci extension. So this is the ultimate target, but this can only happen. Don't believe anyone that tells you like XRP will go to insanely high prices, no matter what Bitcoin is doing. No, this will 100% depend on what Bitcoin will be doing. There is no $50 XRP without Bitcoin at 200,000 or 250,000. Forget it. It is an absolute prerequisite that first they win the lawsuit and second that Bitcoin goes to 200 or 250,000. Then yes, then we can indeed pump to such prices and it does make sense from a market cap perspective because XRP always in every market cycle reached 50% of Bitcoin's market cap in every cycle during its top. You can check it on coin market cap every time 50%. So this would mean if Bitcoin goes to 250,000, a price of $50 per XRP. This can happen, but as I said, only under the two conditions that Bitcoin first goes so high, which I think is likely, but it's not 100%. Nothing in life is 100% proof. I'm just telling you that this is a very real probability, but I cannot guarantee it. And second, that they win the lawsuit against the SEC, which looks very likely. So I can just from my gut feeling tell you that I think the probability for this to happen is like 60, 60, 65, 70% not like 99%, okay? Because really Bitcoin has to pump and they have to win the lawsuit. So uh, we cannot say what Bitcoin will be doing with 100% certainty, why? Because Bitcoin, as it appears, is just following the stock market. Bitcoin has been following the Dow Jones. Look, let's look at the Dow Jones. Bitcoin has been following the stock market since its inception. Bitcoin was created basically in 2009 or late 2008 and started trading in 2010. So it's been in a bull market, in a stock bull market for its entire existence. And what will happen if we now get a world financial crisis? Then, of course, it will drag Bitcoin also down. I personally think we will get a last push. I compared this fractal here to the one from 1929. And I think we are here now and we will get this last push before so a last push before it will start breaking down like it did here. But this is of course not 100% certain. So this is just a probability. So this is my personal opinion now. I think XRP has the potential to break out. We saw the chart XRP BTC is super bullish. It's doing this falling wedge and XRP USD 
is also super bullish because it is doing this um, super long term wedge here, which ends in July this year. And if Bitcoin pumps, I think it will break out no matter what the lawsuit will do. And if the lawsuit is resolved in favor of Ripple, it will pump insanely, but only if Bitcoin will go sideways or also pump. If Bitcoin now dumps insanely to 20,000, even then I think XRP will not pump so much, even if they win the lawsuit. So you see, it's all interconnected. You cannot look at an altcoin just on its own. You always have to think what Bitcoin is doing. You always have to take into account the movement of Bitcoin because all the altcoins, let's be honest, are just following Bitcoin. They are just like Bitcoin is the main index and they are following. So then this is my analysis on XRP. We still have to be patient, but I personally think it's looking good and all the get rich quick persons are already out of XRP. Only hardcore psychopaths and insanely crazy holders like me are still in XRP, knowing that XRP really solves um provides utility xrp solves a real problem you know a real world problem by providing liquidity for international remittances so it solves a real issue here it's in talks with banks banks are already run, uh, having trial runs with xrp so i think this coin really serves uh, something and that's why i think um, it has a good uh, a bright future but of course we want it to win the lawsuit and Bitcoin to go to 200, 250,000. Uh, these are the necessary conditions. So then friends, this was my analysis. Next time I will look at another coin. Let me know in the comment section which coins, all coins I should analyze. I wish you a nice day and see you next time.